Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to go over the Armor Reforger tools, specifically the world editor and how to make a basic world with a deathmatch mission and publish it to the workshop. I hope this video comes as a help to those that are trying to learn the Armor Reforger infusion tools. The world editor in this video, we will learn more as I learn more. I'll make video tutorials on further mission editing as well as larger terrains with other things that I may learn like road splines, river splines and things like that that I've not quite learned yet. So this first video will just be a visual help to you guys on making your first terrain, having the lighting and post-processing effects work correctly and so the map looks okay and playable. We'll add some player spawns, some faction spawns, faction loadout, the basics of how textures work and object painting also for trees, bushes, etc. to add that bit of extra detail to your map and a team deathmatch game mode. So without further ado, I will pass you over to Falcon of the Past. Uh, this was recorded on stream. And I hope you enjoy. So when you start the Armor Reforger tools, which you get with Armor Reforger, uh, it'll be a separate download in the tool section of Steam. You download those, you launch it, and this will be the first thing you'll pop up. Infusion Workbench Launcher. Uh, I've already got a project uh, launched, the map that I've made, which we'll go over in a moment. You want to click Create New, of course, and then name the project, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll probably just leave it as New Infusion Project for now, if it'll let me. You want to choose the dependencies, which is like, the, the mods that it might use uh, so it doesn't have any conflicts when you try and uh, publish it. So you can put Capture and Hold in there, which was the official mod uh, on the workshop by Bohemia and the core assets. And that's my other map that I made originally. So we'll untick that because we don't want that included. And we will uh, just press OK. And it should launch the actual workbench um, when it's ready. There we go. And what we're going to play with today is the world edit editor, the world editor only. We can see our new project here. We've made this folder here, new infusion project, and there's nothing in it, just the add-on. So what we want to click on is the world editor. This will load up the actual map creation tools, which will be very similar to people who've used Unity or Unreal Engine. They've made it very, very simple and uh, kind of it has some differences. I had to learn a couple of things different, um, dragging certain entities into the world that I wouldn't have to have done with Unreal Engine. Uh, Unreal Engine does seem a little bit simpler, but, you know, it's not too far off with the uh, Infusion world creator. So if we look in here, this is what's actually in the world. So we've got our world here. Uh, what we want is a terrain. So as you can see, there is nothing here at all, just a cube, which is our world. And we want to go down to create on the bottom left here. And we'll type in the search bar, terrain, and we want the generic terrain entity. There's SCR. Sometimes you want to use the SCR versions of them. Uh, for some reason, not 100% sure why, but generic terrain will work for this one. So once that's in, we want to do a save and then we want to name our map inside new infusion project. Make sure you click that. And then we want to name our file uh, test or something, whatever. Testies, um, in, make sure it's in that new folder you made. Otherwise it can crash as well and give you all kinds of errors. Press OK. So yeah, once we've dragged that terrain in there and then we save it, so we've got our test map. Let me just make sure that's yeah, testes is in there. We just double check that in that folder there, we've got testes, which is our terrain we've created, our world. We want to right click the terrain here, create new terrain on the terrain, terrain entity. And then we can call our terrain whatever we want. We can give it a size, a grid size. Uh, we'll try, we'll just do 128. And we'll leave all that as default. Leave it as terrain create. And voila, from that point, we have a terrain created. And then from this point, we can start messing with the design and look of it and everything like that. We've got a basic 128 terrain here. Let's click that terrain. We want to go to object details here, which is in the bottom right panel here. Uh, we will have this panel to go to as well shortly, but this one for this we want here. And we want to make sure we set all of these coordinates to zero we want zero there zero there zero there that makes sure we get no errors um with our camera that we'll put in so if i go ahead and put a camera in now actually we should be able to walk on this terrain uh, as basic as it is so if i go here and we do camera uh let's try and remember where the which camera is i need srs this is this is where i said you'll, you'll need some scr entities so we drag the scr camera manager in i believe that's the one uh, if we didn't have the terrain at zero 
all zero. You can change, I think, the Y coordinate to raise it and lower it once the water level's in, but we'll, we'll get to the water level. Uh, you can uh, adjust that one, but if you have changed the other coordinates of the terrain, you'll just fall through the map. There'll be no collision when it breaks the collision. So then, once we've got our camera in anyway, let's go to the play button and play from camera, press play, and save, and we should land on the terrain and be able to walk around. But there's no skybox, so you'll see all the bugginess. Pull out our gun. We can have a little shoot. But that is our first terrain in Infusion Engine using the World Editor. But now we need to get a skybox in because that looks horrible. We just press escape. We can go back to the editor. And then what we want to do is click on our terrain. Uh, is it terrain or is it our world? It's our world. There we go. And we got the uh, environment here. Sky preset, cloud renderer, clouds preset, ocean material, ocean simulator, lens flare config. We want to find all of these and plop them into their respected category here and these bars. So we'll go to the table of contents by clicking these two dots here next to sky preset. We get a sky box in there. I want to go to armor reforger, terrains, common, sky, atmosphere, atmosphere, emap. Put that in there. It will go white. Let's put in some uh, other stuff. The cloud preset. Oh, I've got to try. This is where I've got to try and remember what goes in. <laughs> Uh, in here. I think we want clouds uh, volumetric. Then we want ocean material. We go to Armory Forger again. Terrains, common, water, and ocean material is ocean. Should be ocean map. Should be an ocean simulation. We should be uh, going to the same ish area. And ocean simulation. And we just want, I think we can pick any of these. We just want, we'll do an island. We'll check out an island. Let's check out a lens flare. We go, rains, common. Did I go in the right thing there? I don't think I did. We can also search. And we'll find the lens flare. Um, I think that's the one config. Um, just there. And then we'll save. Um, why this is all whited out? I'm not 100% sure right now. Oh, I didn't do the planets. That might be why. Let's add, 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 and we will add um, our planets in here. So let me just get uh, the planets. We want uh, sun. Where are my... Where's my sun, mate? There's my sun. So it's in uh, terrains, common sky, planets, sun. We'll just drag the sun in there. We'll get the moon next. So let's just search moon, and it should be similar, but moon... And we will grab uh, stars. I'm going off the top of my head, so if I miss something, that'll be why. Um, so that'll give us our atmosphere and everything like that. Now, if it's white like this, it's probably to do with our HDR um, post-processing effects that I haven't added yet. So we'll probably do that next just to get our... Uh, uh, lighting correct um, but what we'll do let me let me add a post process and let's try and sort out this white out uh, we've got on the terrain if we press play now if we go over here it will be horrible and white got our sounds we're on our terrain but um, yeah it's all horrible so let's get some post processing uh, in, in the world here we go down to create again and we'll just do PPE generic PPE effect we'll drag that in drag that up but let me just get my sheet up so I remember what to add um, we need to add in screen space reflections, God rays, HBAO, HDR, height map AO, PPAA, rain, SSDO, and underwater. Um, I need to try and remember. Right, so this one we want to be ba 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 ba. Screen space reflections. We want to rename that as well. So we'll do um, PP. Bizarre. I'll rename it. And then we want to do, um, I want to put everything to do with um, post processing inside that as a drop down so it'll keep it a little bit tidy. Uh, so if we drag in another generic post processing, we'll have to go through and change the values for these individually soon. Uh, what we want now is a God Rays. So I'll drag that up into there and we'll add God Rays. And we will choose God Rays in the profile. Boop, boop, boop. Where is it? There it is. And then we want to get another one. Post processing effect. 
you go add all these color corrections and it, it, you, you'll see you'll see the effect surely you'll see it next one hbao hbao and uh you know i could drag in a bunch of these and do it a little bit of a better way probably but right next one hdr this is where we, we might get start getting a little bit of little bit of the old color correction we go back to create drag another pp effect in and we will go we'll add a custom one in i don't think height maps in that one is it right, drag that in there let's get the next one out the effect and we should be okay i, I think height maps the only one that's like that um ppaa So I know what it is. PPAA, change the name and drag it into another PPE effect. And we should have a rain selection here. That in there. And then get another PPE effect. So a little bit, a lot, a lot of drag, drag and drops, a lot of drag and drops. What we got next? SSDO. SSDO should be there. SSDO. We'll go through these one at a time and uh, adjust their values. And hopefully, I'm going to look like a right knob, and I, if this white hasn't gone. <laughs> and then we're still looking at a white screen. Oh, my God. I'm going to look such an idiot. Um, and last one, underwater, I think, would be the underwater effects for when you are underwater. Ooh, we'll drag that there and then we'll have a look through these settings that I have saved here for the right type of look for us. So let's go to um, SSR. Just uh, We'll just zero that out, I think. Zero that out. God rays. Uh, where are we? Two. HBAO. We're on a 15. HDR, we're on a 16. HDAO, 15. A 1 and a 17. Yep, a 1 and a 17. On uh, PPA. Rain. Uh, yeah, 4. Save that just quickly. 14 on SSDO. And a three on underwater. Right, let's save that for it. Yeah, we've saved that. There is something I've missed. I'm telling you now, there's something I've missed that's given me the uh, the whiteness. Let me jump back. What we'll do, we'll jump back to my other map. We'll have a quick look at what I actually have made. Here's one I made earlier kind of thing. And we will uh, check what I've actually missed. And that that's the tutorial, guys. It worked. Um <laughs> <laughs> all right let's have a look uh as you can see it gets messy so what we want this is all like the uh, 3d assets trees bushes and all that i don't even know what that did right let's have a look what we got world light entity that might be the thing um probe entity that might be the thing so any of these that i've not added in and you can see they're my factions for the team so what I'll, I'll show you actually how it works when it's finished so this is the little map i made it's just an island we've added a little bit of uh seaweed some some gravel beach you can see uh, this is my finished island I made. It's got like a small team deathmatch foliage, heavy little tank, a couple of wrecks. We've got some uh, sort of jeep over here in the reeds and a, and a old thing. Some hills. Look, look at these Look at these textures. Look at this. Leaves. Uh, oh, ooh, all the detail. Um, some trees, broken trees. All the detail. It's just a tiny little map if we zoom out. We can see the little gravel beaches, the seaweed, some rocks and stuff like that. So if I press play now, it should load me into an actual... No, it doesn't. Okay, it's uh, I lied. There we go. Now it'll load me into a game. I was on camera. So this has actually loaded me into the game. This is how it'll work in the game. This is finished. It will work if I could uh, finish another one because I've cocked it up last time. Team deathmatch. This is pick your team. US army soviet we go us and we'll just continue and we'll pick our loadout and we'll pick our spawn point so i have three on either side there's three this side of the island as well for ussr we just pick one and deploy and it'll load you in and it's deathmatch 15 minutes deathmatch and uh shoot people in foliage
He's over there. All the foliage. Um, I will show you how to paint trees on. You can paint trees on. There is um, a way of auto terrain. Uh, so there is a thing which I did do with uh, Unreal Engine, but I've not I've not figured it out or looked it up into in the discords yet on how to do auto terrain. So there is a way with height maps. So the height, obviously, if you don't know how a height map works, it does different like shades that tells the editor what kind of height that's part of the terrain should be so like a lighter terrain a lighter part on the map should be lower and a darker be higher or, or vice versa you know um but there's also a way of importing those height maps that will do textures so if there's a texture that's flat ground it'll be it'll know to put grass there and if it's up on a high mountain it'll put stone there and gravel like a mountain um and the sides of a mountain will be your stone the top of a mountain will be grass and maybe some trees you can you can make it do that i haven't figured that out in this yet so all of this is handmade i've not actually done a auto generation thing but it's all painted on this um till i learn how to do the auto paint uh tree de generation and height map generation um yeah it's handmade so but that's that right uh yeah it's one of these one of these is giving me the uh issue of uh it will be in whited out world light entity There we go. World Light NC. That was the one. Hey! Well, it's rained a little bit in the water because we added it to zero. If you don't have it on zero, the, the water won't actually be level with your terrain. And we can actually lower it a little bit. As you can see, our terrain... Well, we could deform our terrain. Or we could um, make the terrain how we want it for now. And then uh, adjust its height and stuff for, uh, as the water is. Um, you know, to make it so it don't look like that. <laughs> uh, you can either lower the terrain with the sculpt tool or lower the terrain itself with the coordinates in the hierarchy yeah so i think it's that let me just check yeah that hired it 10 so just change your y for up and down do not change the others otherwise your terrain um collision will break okay so we've added uh the light entity was the issue with the white so that's what i was missing i was missing something but we do want environment probing as well um that actually wants to be global as well type on the environment or probe entity make sure that is globally placed that'll be the whole map and i've ticked on the sky ocean terrain roads but that'll do for now and the light entity is, is literally default. That's I've just dropped it in and that's it. Um, the PE effects, processes and effects in there should do all the uh, color and lighting and stuff like that for the most part. Oh, let's add that other one that I was uh, seeing from the other map. What did I add? Gen uh, environment, generic world, and what was it? Time and weather. Let's add time and weather quick. It's got to be that one. So we'll add the time and weather in for now. If we have to change things, we'll change them. Uh as needed but at the moment that's good if we go down to here now and press play we should be on our terrain no we won't be on our terrain because I've, I've not clicked play from camera position and now we'll be on our terrain and hdr will focus and there we go hdr has adjusted it's a bit dark it's a wee bit dark but we're on our terrain we have ocean. We have star. Look at them stars. Look at that. We have stars in the sky. We have a sun over there. Uh, and a moon somewhere. Should be a moon somewhere. Oh, yeah, the sun's up, so the moon's probably below us. Um, so, there was an issue. We'll save that. And there was an issue with, if your map is dark, it shouldn't be this dark. There is something else I'm missing. Uh... Was it map entity or CR map entity? I can't remember now. Ah, that might be what it is. My weather state machine entity. What we want to do for time and weather manager entity is weather state machine and weather parameters. Totally forgot about that. That's just clicked as I'm looking at this. Uh, you need to add these. This will probably correct the darkness. So we going to click those dots with the state machine. We just type in weather and we should terrains state machine. This one 
weather preset state machine weather states and then you see weather parameters for the next one there so we do that one in there there we go it's brightened up and we go parameters there and weather again type in there so it brings it up parameters bam done there we go and it's bright there we go now we can press play and it will not work because i've not clicked on load from camera again there we go Woo! there we go fixed it okay i didn't need discord after all i remembered as i saw that weather state machine thing there we go okay so now we got that i will do a height map and we'll see if a height map is going to work for me today because height maps did not work for me last night when i was trying it and trying to remind myself because i totally forgot how to do a height map so what we want to do for a height map is along here we have the tools along the top bar here and the two mountains one here or the pyramid looking thing which is two mountains is terrain tool and then go down to the bottom left and we'll have terrain tool i'm gonna click there and it'll bring us to a new window here and we can import a height map we click import height map it's got some settings here and we can resample heights and all that good stuff if we want to but we don't want to really um, i think we can untick that and then we want to find our height map so if i go to my desktop we've got some height maps here and we will load in island uh, island height map so to show you what uh height map look oh hang on let me just close that quickly i'll show you what a height map looks like when i described it earlier these are height maps so this is what a height map looks like they're just different colors and like the white will be the top of the mountain and the black will be like the crevice the bottom of the map so you can make these with uh, tools or you can download them on online sometimes there's free ones which i think where i got these height maps from but you can make them yourself so we'll use that map that was based off of my one i've already made anyway you can see the rough outline here but we need uh, to adjust its height so uh what we'll do is go back into import and we can untick that and maybe it'll put its heights as it should be we'll see maybe it'll break it who knows because with those settings it's super low and with those settings it's uh looking 10 out of 10 to be honest <laughs> okay let's uh let's leave that let's uh do zero to 20 or we'll try that see what kind of level that gives us if it gives us some heels some bumps and lumps but it doesn't go over the top that'll do that'll do for a example look at that look at that that's a nice little island isn't it so as you can see got the edges of our island and our water isn't really reaching uh like a beach area up here it should be kind of high and we haven't got our swampy area that we saw on my original map that i have finished so we should be able to get a swampy-ish kind of area. If we go back to our, our, our terrain, sorry, and we go back to our object properties that are on the bottom off of the terrain tool, go back to our and X, Y, Z axis, and we will do a minus 10. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Right, we'll leave it at minus nine for the terrain height. So we sunk that down in the water there. Uh, you can't really see the edge of the map like this when you're actually in game. So let's jump in the map again. Uh, obviously, we can see it's untextured at the moment. We will texture it sort shortly. Save it, jump in. We are on our island. Look at these jagged edges, but we can tidy any jaggies up from the height map generation. Um, this map is, should be eight, I believe, 8,100 uh, pixels. And we've done it like 128 pixels. So it's super tiny, shrunk up uh, compared to what it should be. That's why it's giving us some rough edges. It's a bit of a bit of a little bit of a corruption in the generation from the high map. But we can fix that with the, doing the proper size of 8,000 pixels. We've got our island. We've got our island sorted. We've got our little riverbeds here, which we can carve out with the sculpting tool. Get a little bit of, bit of water coming through here, which is just using the ocean very basic at the moment until i learn how to do rivers on a bigger island and roads lines and all that good stuff for now a smaller map to get you started is the key today so let's go back out and now it looks like the moon uh so we need to give this terrain a bit of texture wouldn't you say mm, wouldn't you say so let's go to not that one let's go to terrain we'll go back to the terrain tool so with the mountains tool up there the terrain tool We'll go down to terrain tool down the bottom and we'll go to paint 
And there's a default texture here. Um, which I think we... Uh, I think we can use. Let me see if I can paint here. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. No, let's get another texture in there. Let's... Um, where are we? Where are we? Uh, we're... Common textures. No, it's, that's the wrong one. Um, terrains. There we go. We want to go armory forger. Terrains. Common surfaces. And these green ones here. Emats are the ones we want. So what color shall we do the island itself? We've got dirt one, dirt two, forest, conifer. One, two, uh, grass. We can do it. Um, recolor it any of these. I don't think... Is there snow? I don't think there's snow, is there? We can drag a few in anyway and see what it looks like. Let's get um, get a dirt in there. Just drag it across into the window. We get dirt two in there. We get conifer in there. Conifer two. And we'll get that one in there. And that one in there. Right. Uh, what we want to do, if we want to change this texture from the default texture, we want to just right-click. Say let's right-click dirt. And then uh, fill surface layer, clear others. Okay. And boom. There we go. It's all dirt. So it's actually coloured now for Jimmy, and we can see all the rocks, the texture, the bump mapping, the uh, all the all the tessellation and, and all the good stuff, all of the detail on this map. But it's a uh, very basic, isn't it? Very basic. And if we wanted to fill this with trees, that's probably not the best start base texture, which I found out. Um, so what we want to do here is use a conifer base, maybe. So let's right-click that one, fill surface, and clear others. Boom. Do we want that one? Because we're going to put trees. We want that one. Is that going to be better to paint? The details. You notice as well how this texture adds foliage. It's not just a texture. It actually adds a lot of foliage and detail to our map. Rocks and, and plants. Um, mm, do we want that one? Or let's go back to, to terrain. It uh, took us off of it. Oh, so let's try this one. Um, which one did I do? Okay, let's try this one. That one's not so green and lush. We got some sticks, twigs, rocks. That was that one. Press play, save. We've got our little island going. Look, it's looking good, looking good. We ain't got no trees, but what we'll do is we get some of these rivers dug out. They swamp a little bit deeper, like we did on the finished map. So what we want to do is go to terrain sculpt. And we want to try and flatten, maybe. Um, smooth. Let's just make sure Make sure this tool is. So let's test a little bit here. Oh, that's too much. Get some, uh, get some of this river going out. Look, dig it through where you can't just see the outline of the river there. Once you get your settings right with your fall off. Trying to get water to go through make it look something like watery stuff there but we don't want it so deep that we're swimming but we want it so it's uh, like a kind of a swampy area a little bit like the other map that we've already made feel like bloody Bob Ross Bob Ross would be proud right we'll leave it at that for now oh no there's a little bit there a little bit there Looks all right. Looks all right. It could be worse. Do do that a bit thicker. Could be worse. Let's um, smooth these out quick. Get rid of that. Smooth it down. Make it look natural a little bit. There we go. That makes those inlets look a bit better, doesn't it? Do, 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 do. And we can just so we can get rid of those jagged edges with this smoother smooths all the edges out, so it's not all like pointy and sheer. Makes it look a bit nicer. There are some other things to do with texturing that I'm not quite hundred percent on yet, as well as road splines, river splines, and all that proper. I've, I'm yet to learn those, as well as the cells. So, as far as I can understand, the map is split into, like, 
four cells or more, depending on the size. I believe this one is four cells. Um, if you put too much textures in one of those cells, it will stop you painting the kind of rest of the map in that texture. So you've got to kind of be very um, liberal with your spreading of the texture. Uh, if I just do like a bit of gravel beach all the way around, it works. But if I try and just like paint massive amounts of like gravel beach texture everywhere, like cover the whole of the ocean floor up and stuff, it will eventually say, oi, no, and just stop me. And there'll be like a dead straight line where it will stop me painting into the next sector, the next cell. I don't understand it just yet. I've not read up on it yet. I don't know if people have found out more about it. The documentation is very slim, official documentation. Community, like I've said, have put a lot of uh, work into this. On the official armor reforger and uh, um, infusion modders discord which is where most of my information has come from to be honest um, there is documentation which i will put in the description to the video i make for this uh, all the documentation i know of that the community has shared as well as the discords for the armor reforger discord and the infusion modder discord for the, anybody interested in more information or if they get stuck um, people have really been helpful for me um, there's always people in there learning and, and I've give help when I've uh, spotted it and, and uh, some people asking the same questions I've like figured out how to get my map not white and how to brighten my map up. You know, those same questions I've I've helped people out with as well. Let's smooth that bit out. That's annoying me. It's a little, pretty little smooth out. Right, there we go. Right, let's get on to the um, texturing. So if we go same tool, mountain, terrain tool, and we go to paint, we can then paint by just selecting uh, one of these. So if we want to go to, let's say, add a little bit more uh, of the green, the greener texture. We click the greener texture. We see it's gone red. This is where we're going to paint. So then if we go to an area, we can adjust our radius. So we can change our radius, our size of our circle, and our strength so we can make it a stronger paint or weaker. And watch this blend. Watch the blend of this texture, base texture, and this new one go down. Look at that. Look how that blends and looks natural. That moss growth. Just slowly comes in how natural it blends with our base texture into that new texture we're laying down now this is what i want to test with a totally new texture that the engine doesn't have already that armor reforger doesn't have and put like my own texture in and see if it automatically does this blending as well i imagine it does in whichever way you've got to set up a texture and material but this just really impressive i imagine you have got to set it up to some degree uh within which will, which will be something i'll learn future I love uh, this uh, terrain creation game dev stuff. I love it. Never have time to make it, but I'm making time for people. And it's uh, something I said I, I wanted to do was learn this and have a look. So I love world creation. I think it's um, amazes me what people can create in games. Like the, the, the towns, terrain, scenery, it just blows my mind. So it's always something that's fascinating. I mean, I made maps for original Half-Life with Hammer Editor. And I made um, Duke Nukem 3D maps, Doom maps back in the day. So it's like natural evolution for me of trying out how games of it's, it's just impressive it just always blows my mind what people create in these things so it's really impressive and gives you a lot more respect for the development teams that put the effort into creating these tools as well as using them to make worlds like the map in a reforger is super detailed like i wish i could get to the stage of be able to make a map like that just that would be a dream that'll be a dream happy little dream but anyway yeah that texture i am super impressed with that, that texture blending so we can add a little bit of green 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 but what i like to do is use the object brush which is this brush just up here on the top of the toolbar there we click that as you can see at the moment i've got granite uh granite forest cluster of rocks model in there now what this is is simply an object brush so i can paint those rocks which is a 3d model wherever i want just like the paint tool for the texture i can paint in some rocks so uh, let's have a look on the on the riverbed here. The little I have some pretty little rocks. That's a bit too much. I gotta I gotta tidy that up. There we go. See how like, the flatten tool makes it all the jaggies look nice, right? Let's go back to our object painter, and we are with our rocks, and we can put there some rocks there. We just do it roughly, so you can see get the idea with the rocks there. You can place those wherever you want. You can add more than one three D object, so you can paint a bunch of stuff if you wanted to in a certain area. Um, so what we'll do is we will remove the uh, rocks that I called bush by accident. Uh, let's just save this quickly where we are now. We'll add a new object array. So we'll call this tree one, tree one. And then we have our prefab we need to select. So we'll go to the three dots and we will go to Armory Forger, prefab library. 
vegetation, trees, and if we click it, we should get a preview of what the tree looks like. So a tree that suit your environment you're making. Uh, let's have a look. We get a couple of trees in there. Right, that tree looks quite quite nice, doesn't it? Let's get that tree in there. So we've got one tree in there. Let's click the plus again, and we'll call this tree two. We're going to add two trees, and then we'll click the three dots, and we'll click Armory Forger, Prefab Library, Vegetation, Trees, and we'll find another tree that's a bit different to that one. So we've got a nice difference variation in our trees we're putting down. We can put these dead tree trunks down, which that, that could actually look nice about the island. This uh, bumpy dead trees. No, we'll add one of those. We'll add one of those as well. And then let's add a third tree. Three. And we will add another tree. Armory Forger. Prefab Library. Vegetation. Trees. Go to the bottom. Right to the bottom. See what we got. Yeah, I like that one. And then we've added all those. Radius. Blah, blah, blah. You can do its individual minimum scale, maximum scale. You can... So it'll be a minimum size and a maximum size that will uh, paint onto the terrain. And uh, I think there's some other settings there as well that you can do. Um, but we'll just uh, go with that for now. We'll maybe up the radius a little, 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 little bit. And let's paint some pretty little trees. Oh, shit. That's a lot of trees. Um, that is still extremely strong, man. Those trees are massive. I'll shrink those trees down a little bit. So we've got a nice tree there. Let's... Uh, Dot these about. We can, uh, if we spread it, it seems to just like throw trees out. Like, look, look at that. I throw out like 20 trees and that's more space. So I don't get why that's not. We, don't, we want to avoid the um, war though with this tree placement. Try and keep it somewhat realistic, I guess. So we got the basics there. Let's add a couple more trees over here. Hopefully, get mostly little trees and logs on the edge of the island. That'll do there. So what we can do then. If we're happy with our tree placement, what we'll do is just a rough kind of thing here. Uh, what we can do then is remove all of our oh, all of our trees, and we can then add in bush one, and we can fill out our uh, little spaces and bits and bobs and along the riverside with trees. Keeping in mind, this is a very basic, cheesy way of doing rivers. A bit of vegetation, bushes, and we'll have a look for a nice couple of bushes. That one will do nicely. And we'll grab another bush. Bush two. Back in there, Armory Forger, Prefab Library, the vegetation bushes. And we'll grab another nice little bush. That's a nice low one. That's a different one, look. And we'll grab one more bush just for the painting. Bush three. How about that? Look, we're going to paint, paint and put the details in along our riverside. Look, get some reeds in there and some bushes. We've got some cover for our approach. Nice little paint in there, look. Some of these in the shallower area have grown on the shallower side of the water. So we've got a little, little cross in there across to this with some cover. We can crouch or crawl across. A load of bushes along here, along there, along there along there we fill it all in so it's a bloody nice reeds and bushes everywhere look got some about in the middle a nice bit of growth oh that's what she likes bit of growth with your bush welcome welcome to, to my stream where everything is taken out of context and for the most part these bushes actually don't look too bad like they actually stick to where you're painting they're not floating in the air for the most part i've had a couple that look a bit iffy but very, very rare, and it depends on the terrain. If you've got dodgy terrain that's very spiky, yeah, it's going to happen. But if you've got a smoothed out terrain, which you put more effort into, of course, then uh, that's how that'd work. But once you're finished with your terrain, so this is basically, we'll say this is finished. It's not finished, but we'll say it's finished. Um, and you want to get uh, a mission working, right? You want to get a mission working. So what we'll do, prefabs MP modes, there we go. You want a garbage manager as well, because that will remove corpses. If we go into our Armor Reforger prefabs and we multiplayer managers, so we've got factions, loadouts, and modes, where we've got team deathmatch, deathmatch, and all that. Let's go into those folders now and we'll add in our missions. Just trying to 
uh, refresh my memory just quickly there. And if we add in a team deathmatch game mode with a selection just on the map there, no matter where. And let's just get my selection tool quickly and I'll pull this up out of the way so I can see it. And uh, let's get in our loadouts and we will get a loadout manager for the US and USSR. So we can see our loadouts and then let's get factions because we want two factions for uh, team deathmatch which will be the us and ussr we'll drag that one in as well and i think let's try and press play and see if it gives us all our menu press play we'll save and fingers crossed Woo! there we go we have our menus but this will give us our loadouts our team deathmatch selection selection being you have to choose us or army if you do uh, auto, it will automatically put you in a team. Um, this one will just be pick. So we pick US and yes. And then loadout will be our loadouts we can choose, which will be the loadout um, prefab we dragged in, which uh, we'll just pick uh, with grenade launcher. And we have an error. Select spawn point. I don't have spawn points in. So I think the actual spawn menu stuff is actually in har. Spawning. Spawn point will spawn one there. One there. We'll just do it again. We'll do the basic layout. We'll do USSR on the other side. And we'll just do this step by step to make sure. Face the right way. One point there. Face the right way. And we'll add another one just on this little splush of an island. Right now let's save and we'll test again and we will spawn us continue and that is missing map entity is missing in C oh shit that might be what it is so that's the one where we need scr map entity i think pop that up there we'll save we'll load there we go that works scr map entity i remembered i remembered I knew I'd remember. Well, let's pick a spawn point. Woohoo! We have a working team deathmatch map. Mission is loaded. Uh, we haven't set the time limit though, have we? 900 seconds. Thank you, thank you. That should be what that is. I think the time limit's in seconds. Uh, let's play. We go that time, that time, that time. Pick a spawn here. Make sure that works. Yep. And I think that should be good to go. But it's nowhere near finished. Um, so what I could do is upload for testing purposes, I suppose. Hmm. To go through the publishing. So that's all working. We're getting no errors now. So to upload this to the workshop, we'll close this. And you use the actual Infusion Workbench. Go to Workbench. Log in with your account. Publish your project. Select your project. It's always selected that one there. Version 1. You can update it as you fix it and you can do public if it's finished and you're happy with it. So you can update it, uh, upload it as private, unlisted, test. And then once you finish the actual project, make it public and then it appears on the workbench as normal. Um, but what we want to do is test project will not be visible in the workshop. Unlisted is project can be found only by dependency. Could do unlisted. Type in all your details. Summary, uh, same thing. Within Infusion. And then um, preview image, uh, just an image. You can just grab, uh, I don't know. Grab that one because it's done. You just grab an image for it. That'll be like its thumbnail. Category um, is multiplayer scenario, kind of, I guess. It's team deathmatch. And it's a, there's a, it's a terrain because it's a whole new map. And then you press bundle. It will bundle the whole package together and then publish once you're logged into your correct Bohemia account. And you can upload it to uh, test private, unlisted, and public if it is ready for public consumption and not full of like errors and going to crash and all that. Make sure it's working 100% so you don't bloat the workshop. But yeah, publish. It'll do. It'll be there. It'll work, it'll it'll be magical.